My name is Kelly Mershman, and I am here to personally welcome you to Beaming the Light on Women's History. This event is sponsored by the Youth Ambassadors Club. Now, before we get started, I want to say a quick thank you for giving me your attention and attending. Here, are you ready? Here we go. By now, you should know that March is Women's History Month, and today we will be recognizing the achievements of women in all facets of life, past, present, and future. Join us while through presentation, interview, activity, entertainment, and speaker, we hope to encapsulate the rise of empowered women and girls. And you will see that we are all part of Women's History Month. Yes, even you. To give a little history, Women's History Month is a celebration of women's contributions to history, culture, and society. It was inspired by what we now know as International Women's Day. Would you believe that Women's History Month started as a day and then developed into a week? And then Congress made it a whole entire month. Every single year, a presidential proclamation is signed that declares March as Women's History Month again. The color of the month is purple, which internationally, purple symbolizes women. This month celebrates women's rights to vote, women being allowed to serve in the armed forces, women being able to coach on professional male sports teams, and women being able to run for the President of the United States of America, and there's so much more. I think Beyonce says it best. Who runs the world? Girls. <laughs> My name is Kelly Mershman, and I am Women's History. Hello everyone, and welcome to YAC, which is the Youth Ambassadors Club, presents more information about Women's History Month, which is March. So we, first up, we have women in the arts. So Carmen Miranda, we have a picture of her on the screen. It's so colorful and I love it. She was born in 1909 and lived until 1955. She was a singer and an actress. She starred in the streets of Paris in 1939, and made her film debut in Down Argentine Way in 1940. And she became the highest paid female performer in the United States during World War II. Eva Hesse was born in 1936 and lived until 1970. She was a sculptor that used various materials, including latex, fiberglass, and plastics to create beautiful works of art. She was also one of the many artists that began the post-minimal art movement of the 1960s. Some of her most famous works include Ademdom in 1967 and Tomorrow's Apples, which was in 1965. Then we have Margetti Bagshaw, who was born in 1964 and lived until 2015. She was an artist which was known for her use of dynamic color palette and textures. Her art career was propelled while being surrounded by her mother and grandmother's works of art. So art ran in the family and it was great to see how her work impacted the world. Margaret's work can be seen in the Smoky Museum in Prescott, the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture, and the Ellen Noel Museum as well. Then up next, we have women in business. So Aisha Bo, at 29, she is an aeronautical engineer and entrepreneur. She has worked with NASA on several projects as a mission engineer. She helps mentor students in mathematics and engineering in a program called the Science Achievement NASA program. She also co-founded STEM Board, which is a women-owned business that creates software solutions for government and private sector clients. They run educational workshops to show the youth the importance of technology concepts such as coding and engineering. So definitely a lot of girl code and the coding movement involved there, which is wonderful to see. So many people involved in that. Then Falguni Nayar at 57. She is the founder of Nika, which means actress or one in the spotlight. Nika is an online company that sells cosmetic and wellness products. Her company offers more than 850 brands and has introduced 35 physical stores. The company's main goal is to celebrate all women while uplifting and building their confidence. In 2017, she was awarded the most beautiful business, most powerful business by Business Today. She has also received the Woman Ahead Award at the Economics Times. Cheryl Sandberg, at 51 years old, is the COO of Facebook and is an author of several books. She has inspired women to be their best selves through written works such as Lean In as well as Public Talks. 
And I'm sure many of us have also heard of Facebook, so it's nice to see a face behind it. Now, women as change makers. Over the years, there has been so many women that are setting the pace and opening up new doors for women later on, and it's wonderful to see. So first up, we have Malala Yousafzai. So she is a 23-year-old motivational speaker and author. She won the Nobel Peace Prize and is a best-selling author of her book, I Am Malala. Even though she encountered many traumatic experiences early in her life, she did not let that stop her from achieving many great things. And Malala is an extremely iconic and inspirational young woman. She still continues to fight for better education and human rights even today. She has written her own book and she continues to inspire several young women all across the country, not just where she's from, to fight for what they want no matter what, whether it be education or different things. She also wanted to learn and took a step when she was only 11. She started reaching out for more education and breaking the limits on how a girl was able to learn, which if you know her story, she was shot and she still continued to push through and she still continued to motivate young women and be the change maker that I think a lot of us look up to and needed to see. And this happened at 15, but she continues to speak out because she survived and I think it's only made her stronger and she's become even more involved in her activism and she was one of the youngest to win a Nobel Prize. And one of my favorite quotes that she has is, education is neither Eastern nor Western, it's human. Zora Neale Hurston was born in 1891 and lived through 1960. She made numerous contributions to the harm Renaissance as a writer and a novelist. She also worked to help protect the rights of African Americans along other side, other prominent women. Now women in the military. So there is so many different branches of the service. And up first we have Alita E. Lutz. She was commissioned as a second Lieutenant in the Army Nurse Corps in 1942. She was also a member of six different battle campaigns and held the record for most evacuation flights at 196 flights and the most combat hours flown by a flight nurse with 814 hours. Her achievements made her the second most dedicated female in service history for the US military, which is an amazing accomplishment. Anne E. Dunwoody. She became the first woman to reach a four-star officer rank within the history of the United States military back in 2008. She was also the first woman to command a battalion in the 82nd Airborne Division for the first Gulf War and was a fourth generational army officer. And then we have Carmen Contreras Bozic. She was part of the Women's Auxiliary Corps or WASSC in 1942 and served as an interpreter while speaking five different languages. She spoke English, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, and French, which is an amazing accomplishment. She was also one of the 195 women that went on to the first all-female cadre overseas in 1943. Then up next, we have Colonel Mary A. Halloran. So she became a member of the first training class for the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps, WAC. She also helped the command the biggest all-female unit overseas and became the first commissioned officer within the regular army. Then we have Marcella Hayes Ng. She was the first black female pilot in 1979 for the US military. She was the 55th woman to receive her piloting wings and she was assigned to the 394th Transportation Battalion in Germany, where she was the unit's first woman leader. And one of the most iconic people and pictures we probably all recognize is Rosie the Riveter, her famous saying of we can do it. So the true identity for Rosie the Riveter has been a subject for debate. The inspiration was believed to be Geraldine Hoffdoyle, who worked in a Navy machine shop in a Navy sh machine shop during World War II. Other sources claim that Rosie was Rosewell Moreau, who worked as a riveter at the Willow Run bomber plant. But the most credible claim is Naomi Parker Freely, who was photographed working in the machine shop at the Naval Air Station. Although primarily Fictitious, the commonly known version of Rose of the Riveter was created by a Pittsburgh artist named J. Howard Miller and was featured on a poster for Westinghouse Electric Corporation under the headline, We Can Do It. So everyone listening, no matter what it is, this saying applies to you. You can do it and you can accomplish your dreams. So go for it. And then up next, we have women in sports. So you might recognize the female and the woman on the board if you watch this year's Super Bowl. Sarah Thomas is currently 47 years old. 
and she's continuing to break the barrier and become the first woman to accomplish various feats within football. She grew up loving sports and played on a male's basketball team because there was no female one and she tried out for it. She said, I'm gonna play basketball. Miss Thomas also became the first woman to officiate a college bowl game back in 2007 and the first female referee during this year's Super Bowl, Super Bowl 55. Miss Thomas was also a finalist for the NFL's officiation development program and she became involved in the National Football League after she got a call from Gary Austin who many of you might have heard of. He's very popular and a very well known name when it comes to officiation within the Football League. He heard about her involvement within high school games and college football games and he reached out to her and that's how she got started. Sarah Thomas will continue to break records by becoming the first female to officiate pro sports and turn the tide for women on the field at football games. And what's also great is there was a couple female coaches that were the first time ever seeing female coaches at this year's Super Bowl. So a lot of women breaking the barriers within sports. Next up, we have women in STEM. So science, technology, and math. So Ada Lovelace was born in 1855 and lived through 1852. She was the world's first programmer in the mid 1800s. She had was an excellent mathematician, worked with Charles Baggy in the first concepts and designs of the computer, which is amazing because we're watching this on a computer and as cyber school students, we attend on a computer. So without her, we probably would not be where we are, which is amazing to see how far they've come and the trailblaze that they've led. Then we have Gertie Teresa Corey, who was born in 1896 and lived through 1957. She was the very first United States woman to win a Nobel Prize for science. She studied how the body works with energy and the Corey cycle. Then we have Joan Clark. She played a major role in World War II where she helped break the Germans Enigma code and her full work remains a mystery due to much being secret cryptolint's work, but she was undoubtedly an amazing mathematician and cryptanalyst. Then we have Kira Nurgan, who is 20 years old. She created an extraordinary polymer that could hold hundreds of times its weight in water at just 16 years old, which is amazing. Being in high school myself, it's just so amazing to see other women and just other people accomplishing so much, especially at a younger age and in such a well-respected field as well. This polymer is also used for crops and has helped massively during droughts in several countries. Macy Jeminson is the first African-American female. She flew into space aboard the Endalver, became the first African-American woman in space and became the first African-American woman to be admitted into NASA's astronaut training program. And then Marie Curie, who is a very popular name and many of you might recognize her. She made many groundbreaking discoveries, some but not limited to finding two new radioactive elements and the creation of an X-ray machine that saved countless lives during World War II. And then Patricia Goldman Reckick made groundbreaking discoveries on the brain, specifically the brain's frontal lobes. And she found that the brain's prefrontal cortex worked with cognition, planning, and working memory. And that was the end of the presentation. So thank you so much for listening to this. And I hope you learned a couple of facts and I hope you took something away from today's presentation. Again, this is presented by the Youth Ambassadors Club, YAC. Thank you again for wanting to learn more about women in history, especially during Women's History Month. Thank you and have a great day. Hi everyone, I wanna welcome you to the interview portion of today's event. I hope you all are having fun and learning a lot. I am pleased to introduce three powerful women that you're going to be hearing from today. We have Miss Hetty Love and Miss Kara Love, and we also have Miss Barbara Thompson. So we have Miss Hetty Love here, and she is from Jacksonville, Florida, and she grew up there in the 1920s where there was complete segregation. And so during that time, she went to Fisk University. And then for her graduate program, she went to University of Pennsylvania. And she was the first African-American to graduate from that program. So congratulations again, Miss Hetty. That is a huge achievement and love. She is from Philadelphia, PA, so a PA native. And she came to Harrisburg after college. And she actually went to Westchester University. 
and she taught for 36 years and she is currently the chair of the St. Stephen's Episcopal Church and that's right here in Harrisburg, PA. Hetty Love and Miss Karen Love are mother and daughter so that is a great thing and we thank you so much for both being here today. Uh, Miss Barbara Thompson is from Birmingham, Alabama. She is now a PA resident. She's been in Harrisburg for 35 years and she retired from Penn State Harrisburg and she was the Director of Multicultural Recruitment and Community Affairs. So with all of this being said, I'm just going to jump right into the questions. What is the importance of young ladies being leaders and involved in activism? Well, the women have always been the leaders in the community. Found that uh, I wanted my child to be involved with other children, although I didn't want to put her in school and she was so young. So I was able to get together in my neighborhood, a group of children. So they would come to my house for a couple of hours every day so she would have some company and yet not be in nursery school. Thank you, Madison, for the invitation to participate today. Uh, let me start like this. Women make up 50% of the population. So we should at least have about 50% women leaders. Right. <laughs> so as we talk to, as I talk to young women, they should be planning to be leaders, taking charge making things happen. It's very important that everybody be able to participate uh, equitably in our society. No one group, no one person. Women should stand up and be represented as much as anyone else. And young women have to start planning that early in life. Don't right. wait until thinking that you gotta wait until you're an older adult to be involved being a leader in your school, in your community, in your church, in your synagogue, wherever you are, you can be a leader, take a role, make things happen. So I would say, get busy. <laughs> Perfectly said. Thank you so much for that encouragement. It's very important that women understand and appreciate all that has gone before them. There are wonderful role models, but women have to be willing to step up. And that means that they need interested adults to take an interest in them and to cultivate and nurture some of the skills that are needed for them to be successful. So that I am proud to say that my parents provided a lot of guidance for me along the way. And so when I became a teacher, that something that I knew I needed to provide for my students and especially for young girls. They need to see that their voices can be heard and that they will be supported by adults who have already led in some ways. Can you describe a time when you were treated differently or experienced a challenge because of being a woman or being African American? Well, both really, because although I managed to escape the South and go back, go to Philadelphia at the University of Pennsylvania, the Wharton School. There were no black women in my classes. And um, most of the white men I encountered really just looked through me, except for three young Jewish men who sought me out and invited me to be a part of their study group. And except for those young men, I had no contact with anybody else in any of the classes that I attended at the university. You started off by saying that uh, I was from Birmingham, Alabama. I grew up in Birmingham, and then I moved away to college and then to other places and then to Pennsylvania. But my early years were all in Birmingham. And you might know that Birmingham was a place that was very segregated and very unequal. So my experiences as an African-American and as a woman uh, always were uh, involved in unequal treatment, if you will. When I was going to school, all of the public facilities were closed to prevent black and whites from 
uh, being together. That meant wow. public swimming pools, public parks, uh, public schools were segregated. Everything was separate. Water fountains, elevators, where you could sit on a bus, everything. So being an African-American growing up in that environment, obviously it impacted me uh, in many, many ways. Obviously the treatment was different from some others. So I guess I would say uh, my whole childhood was uh, uh, relegated to being treated differently. Wow. Wow, well, thank you so much for sharing. Well, I was fortunate to grow up in integrated schools and I did not have a lot of difficulty with those kinds of situations. However, just being African-American always puts you at the table where everyone expects you to be the spokesperson for everybody else. And so uh, thankfully, I knew that when I became a teacher that I was going to make sure that everybody felt included and supported and that every voice would be heard. Wow. Do you have a female role model and that you look to for inspiration or guidance? And if so, why? Well, at this age, I'm not looking for too much guidance, but I do have a couple of young women now who have not been a part of my life until recently. The person who discovered that I was the first African-American to go to finish the Wharton School was uh, a young black woman who's also an Alpha Kappa Alpha woman. And that one of the ceremonies, she heard me, heard them describe me as a graduate. And she came over to me and said, when did you graduate? And when I told her, she said, oh, I need to talk to you. And she was the one who got the world to find out that I had been the first one. So this is Miss Lana Woods, and uh, she's been my best friend role model that I can think of <laughs> in these last few years. Um, I don't think I can name one. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll start with um, my family. There are many uh, women in my family uh, in all occupational levels, uh, all our occupational areas who have de demonstrated resilience and persistence and they've been homemakers, they've been mothers, they've been entrepreneurs, they've been educators, uh, just, uh, just involved in life and they have been an inspiration to me. But also women who have been activists, who have advocated for other people, we know the names like Coretta Scott King and um, Rosa Parks and okay. Mer Merle Evers and um, the, the, the list could go on and on. Marion Wright Edelman. I just think of these people, Fannie Lou Hamer. Uh, I tell you, I grew up in, in Alabama, but I went to college in Mississippi. And so I had an opportunity to work in uh, in Sunflower County, Mississippi, where Fannie Lou Hamer was, uh, where she was trying to register uh, people to vote. So as college students, we were helping with voter registration. People like that are really inspirations to me because they were perseverers. They made things happen. They were working for the betterment of the community. And I just admire the strength and the resilience that they showed and some continue to show today. Even people like Mrs. Teddy Love, she's an inspiration to me because she just perseveres. She continues to work. She never gives up. She doesn't seem to get tired. She's just an involved and committed person and she gives me great strength. One of my best role models is my mother. Uh, she had <laughs> just been an inspiration to me because she has always done, even though she was not able to pursue her career the way she would have had she, had there not been the glass ceiling and had there not been a lot of discrimination where she was told, oh, you're overqualified, even though she had all the credentials or um, sorry, we don't have a place for you. Uh, she managed to take the education that she had and use it for good in the community. 
So she helped to start organizations that worked with, with children like our Tots and Teens group. She was a founder of that. She worked as the treasurer for our church for more than 20 years. She worked uh, at several different black owned businesses when she moved to Harrisburg who needed a little bit of bookkeeping. And by the time she was done, they were coming to her with all kinds of questions. And so I just thought that, you know, if you don't have a way in the front door, you go around to a side door and you still find a way to use what you have and give back to the community. So my next question is, what progress have you seen on gender equality in your life thus far? Gender equality. Well, uh, lots of things have changed over time. Uh, there was a time when women didn't have the right to vote. While I wasn't in that time period, uh, we still deal with issues of voter suppression and trying to prevent people from uh, having the right to vote. There, there are many uh, occupations that women weren't able to um, hold, weren't able to make achievements in certain areas. Uh, pretty much when I was growing up, women were expected to be nurses and teachers, and those are noble professions, and we certainly needed them then, and we need them right now. Yeah, for sure. I didn't know anything about being an astronaut or being an engineer or an entrepreneur or whoever heard of being a CEO when I was growing up. That was just not uh, thought about. So these, these opportunities do exist now and women are assuming those roles and they are excelling and making great achievements. So I think it, we might not call it gender equality, but there is certainly gender uh, representation across the board now in many, many areas. And I would say to young women, keep striving because you can occupy positions that we haven't even thought about, roles that we haven't thought about. You can make changes that we haven't thought about, develop and invent products we haven't thought about. It's right. all out there. All right, so my next question I have is um, any advice for aspiring young ladies who want to make an impact in their community? Well, I think the main thing is to be in contact with your community, to take an interest in what's going on around you, to join groups that you think are making progress and see how your talents can help them to go further. Perfectly said. <laughs> Be your best. Be the best you that you can be. Not trying to be someone else, but being the best that you can be. Strive, do good, work hard. It takes courage sometimes. It certainly takes work to achieve your goals. Set your goals. Set your goals high. Don't let others limit you. If you can believe it and you work hard for it, you can achieve it. And so I would say, in addition to being the best that you can be, also be mindful of other people, of assisting those who need help. I think that's a role for everybody in our society. And also taking care of our world around us, taking care of our planet. Right. We all can play a role. I think that's just really important. Believe you can and try. Closing, I just want to ask you both, what does Women's History Month mean to you? The question would be absolutely nowhere because even when we had men as presidents, we know that they conferred with their wives on many uh, important issues and that their wives were a great help to them. So I feel that uh, Women's History Month is to be admired, but it should not be just for one month of the year. Okay. She was saying about those women that just seeing their role model brings inspiration to others. And so women's history gives us an opportunity to focus specifically on the contributions and the talents and the skills and all of the 
all of the things that women have contributed to the U.S. and to the world. If we look broadly, we can see that. And then if you can see it, then maybe you can also achieve it. So women history provides us an opportunity to see the vision of what's out there for all of us. I would say Women's History Month is critical to our country and our future. Just like Black History Month, it's all American history. It's not just Black history, it's history for everyone. And so many of our females have been what we call those hidden figures, not just the ones that were involved in the space race, who, by the way, were also AKAs. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true that our women have contributed so much to the making of this country. And so it's time to recognize them and support them and celebrate them and teach them anywhere and wherever we go. Amazing, amazing words of encouragement there. Thank you so much, Miss Barbara Thompson, for um, taking the time out of your day to speak with our viewers today. Well, thank you both so much for being willing to be interviewed, and you just brought so much to the table. And I hope our listeners here learned a lot and are inspired and to go out into the world and just achieve some great things. Hi, my name is Ailish. I am a member of the Youth Ambassadors Club. The activity today is writing a thank you note. So you are going to need two pieces of paper. I am going to give you a minute to grab them now. First, you are going to write a thank you note to a woman who inspires you. For an example, a family member, a coworker, a teacher, or community member. Take a moment to tell them thank you. Writing it down in a note makes it so that they can keep the words you say forever. Hand deliver the note or send it in the mail and add a bake full of sunshine to their day. Next, grab your second piece of paper. You are going to write a thank you note to yourself. Take some time and tell yourself how great you are. Now, fold this letter up and ask someone to give it to you sometime in the future, but not too soon. I bet that letter will show up a day you need it most. My name is Ailish. Thanks for being a part of Women's History.
I'm Keisha Lalama. I'm known as a choreographer, educator, leader, and motivator. I'm a professor of dance at Point Park University, and I'm also the director of community engagement with the Pittsburgh CLO. Most of my life has been centered around arts education, and to be able to share a piece of this with you is such an honor. I hope you enjoy it, and thank you so much for having me. Hi everybody, Keisha here, coming to you live from Point Park University. We are in GRW2, the George Roland White Dance Studios. This is our jazz class. We're going to be demonstrating some jazz technique for you today, as well as an excerpt from West Side Story. Are we ready, dancers? Yes! yes. Alright, here we go. Big breath in, and prepare yourselves. Big smiles in those masks. Here we go.
Hello, my name is Misha Stredrick, and I'm an educator, speaker, and author from Baltimore, Maryland. Originally from Youngstown, Ohio, I have earned two master's degrees and I'm currently working on my doctoral degree in education. I know this is not the time for me to go through my resume, but I did wanna give you some sort of insight as to why I'm even speaking with you today. This journey for me, like many women, has not been an easy road. The road we travel to success requires character, leadership traits, and grit. No, not like my favorite Southern food grits, but the type of grit that allows you to keep moving in spite of the obstacles. Let's start there. Let's think about how often women face challenging obstacles on the road to their personal success. How many times are we reminded that we cannot and should not? Painted by society as too weak, too submissive, too strong, too independent, too feminine, too big, too small, too loud, too boisterous. Whew. I just got tired of all the twos. I'm sure many of you can probably think of a few twos that you've had. I'm sure you've had to look in the mirror and repeated a critique that someone else gave you. Don't be ashamed, I have too. As a young child, as a young, young child, I was told that women should not be loud or speak aggressively. Now that I think about it, maybe that person who told me that didn't know that one day I would become a principal which will require me to yell down the hallways of the school, making sure that most of the students hear me. Or maybe they didn't realize that I would be that loud aunt at all of the events showing my support and everybody looks forward to Auntie Misha. But it didn't stop me from second guessing if my volume was too much or if my boldness should be diminished. These were not my own issues, they were issues that someone else created. I was exactly who I needed to be. Size, volume, boldness, and all. I want you to take a moment and think about it. Think about the things that people say that girls should not be. Take a moment. Think about who they say you should not be. And repeat after me. I am who I am meant to be. Did you say it? Did you say I am who I am meant to be? Did you believe it? Can you move in that belief? You see, grit requires you to continue to move forward in spite of. In spite of what you see, in spite of what you hear, and in spite of what you feel. Grit requires you to be disciplined enough to say that I won't stop and strong enough to say that I've got this. And believe me, you do. The women that have paid the way for us have given us something to be inspired by. Like an artist painting a masterpiece, they have become our muse, showcasing their leadership qualities in ways that cannot be ignored. Women like Issa Rae, how many of you know who she is? She had a dream to produce a show, just one show, and it led her to employing many others, acting and producing series of shows that many would once love. Women like Shonda Rhimes, who has produced Grey's Anatomy and Scandal and one of my favorites, Bridgerton. I'm sure many of you have seen this series. I'm actually waiting till the next season to come out. But she walked away from deals because they did not value her at the table because she was a woman. Or women like Queen Latifah, who is known for rapping, acting, singing, and producing, but often speaks on her struggle of bypassing the talk around her weight and her sass. I'm sure that if you set these women around the same table, they, like me, would tell you stories of being labeled, heckled, doubted, and judged. But I'm sure 
They would also tell you stories of how they've had to reach within themselves and say, I've got this. Or how they've had to lean on other women that they knew and that they loved and trusted to believe that they really do have this because we all have flaws and all have doubts. Much like the book that I wrote, Loving You Through It, yes, this is the moment for my shameless plug, <laughs> which entails the importance of sisterhood, which talks about the magical moments when women become our greatest cheerleaders. We appreciate each other. We clap and we smile. These are moments when I hear, yes, girl, take a moment and think about who are your yes girls? Do you have any? Who stands in the wings and claps for you? Is it your best friend? Is it your mother? Your sister? Your aunt? Your girlfriend? Your grandmother? Your teacher? Your mentor? Who listens to your struggle but encourages you to keep going? If you can't think of one, I need you to find one. As women, it's important to have a support system while you strive ahead. Every player should look back and see pom-poms. I mean, who doesn't want to see color shaking behind them as you run? Seriously, you need people around you who inspire you to become more than you have ever imagined. When I think of the women who inspire, what I think of is their courage, their strength their power and influence, their ambition and resilience. I think of who I inspire to be. A child who was raised in an impoverished community with a family who reminded me that I could achieve, but sometimes that didn't happen right away. No, I wasn't perfect. I was the child who ended up in the principal's office many times and who knew one day I would become the principal. I was chastised by mentors who now I am the mentor who does the chastising. I was also the broke kid in college who needed help with meal money. And now I'm giving it. When I was your age, my goal was just to get out of the city and make a difference. I just never knew that the difference that I would make would resemble the many mentors I respected and loved. Many of them happened to be women. So in honor of Women's History Month, I challenge you to contemplate whose character you want to resemble. Is it the character of the women you love? Is it the character that reminds you of the women who were as, cre as courageous as Rosa Parks? Who began a movement? Or as bold as Grace Jones, who stepped into unknown territory? Or as methodical as Maya Angelou? As innovative as the Shonda Brown Duckett, who is now the CEO of Chase Banking, or as caring as Amisha Stredrick, who is now speaking to the most influential group of young people today. I challenge you to write down the character traits and track how you intentionally exhibit these. How do you exhibit love? How do you exhibit joy? Have you exhibited honesty today? Women's History Month gives us a specific time to focus on a specific group, but there's no better time than the present to focus on how to apply the lessons learned from the women we celebrate. How we learn from their grit, how we learn to lead like them in spite of the struggle, and how we learn to showcase their character traits, the ones that we admire the most. Today, I challenge you all to look at Women's History Month with new eyes, with eyes of vision to celebrate the women you know, the young ladies you will meet, and the feminine bosses you will become. With that said, I celebrate you, queens. Happy Women's History Month.